<laughs> I'll be bringing it. Du, 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 du. <laughs> That's quality, you come out there. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talk with Taylor with me, Alan Taylor, and we've been kindly joined here in Belfast at the 19.com Northern Ireland Open by the 19.com English Open champion, Masters champion, UK champion, three times world champion, the jester himself, Mr. Mark Selby. How are you, Hi. mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How's tricks? Good, yourself? Very well, yeah. You've obviously uh, through to the second round here at Belfast. It's a great city, isn't it, mate? Nice view there. Yeah, fantastic city. I really like it, yeah, and great venue as well. Been around the city? Been around? Have a look? Not, mate, no. It's too fresh out there for me. So, <laughs> you know, coming from Leicester, I just stay indoors, mate. <laughs> it's cold up north, lad. It's cold up north. Um, now, I'm guessing if you had a pound for every time someone asked you about the million pound bonus for the home nations, you'd probably have double. Yeah, probably about five now, yeah. Is it? Yeah, but uh, no, it can't happen, can it? I mean, obviously, there's no such thing as impossible, but a lot of it, best of sevens. I'm the only person who can win that million pound, but it's not going to happen, let's be honest. You've got more chance of winning the lottery. <laughs> well, if you win it, if you take a pound, mate, you can put a ticket on. <laughs> now, uh, Leicester's a hotbed of snooker these days. Do you reckon you've had a massive influence on that? There's obviously a few younger players and even like Sir Tom Ford, who's obviously been around for a while, he's starting to come into his own now. Do you think you've had an influence on that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously if I have, and then, then great, because obviously that's what you, you strive for, you know, trying to put your city on the map and obviously get the young lads coming through. You should say we've got a good few players now on the tour, myself, Tom, Ben, Joe O'Connor, Louis Evco. So Leicester's like the new China, mate, you know, with all these young, <laughs> young lads coming through. I mean, hopefully... Uh, they can kick on. Joe's had a great season last year. Hopefully, he can maintain that. And Louis's first time on the tour. Ben's obviously been around for for years, it seems, and Tom's obviously showing his potential. What we all know he's had for for many years. Mm, no, it's good. I mean, I thought you were going to say it was all, all the great WTs influence, but uh, I think you've uh, just pipped in there with your accolades, well, I mean, mate. He, he mentions it all the world, and he's. So I'll leave that to him. You know? <laughs> Everyone's been through his club, and it's all down to Willie himself. <laughs> Well, I know one of your practice partners of late, Dave Gilbert, you actually beat in the 19.com English Open final, become one of your regular practice partners. Yeah. Um, I believe he's an actual Leicester City fan like yourself. Is that mainly due to the mascot, I believe? I think so, yeah. I mean, like, when, when I play him, sometimes he's been there a few times. I don't think he's been in too many games. He said, but when he has gone, he says, uh, Philbert's his hero. Like, obviously, he watches <laughs> Philbert round the pitch and he says, it's his hero. So, hence why he supports him. I don't think it's for the team, he just loves Philbert. So, is, is that his new nickname when I introduce him? Please welcome David Philbert. The angry Philbert. <laughs> the angry Philbert <laughs> the, from Tamworth. The Philbert for Gilbert. But, no, I mean, he's a great lad, Dave, you know. Obviously, a good friend on tour as well. No, 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 it's great, mate. It's a great final. Obviously, talking about other sports, you've been on Question of Sport a few times in your heyday. Do you enjoy that? Different type of uh, media attention, I suppose. It's yeah, nice. it, it's good fun. I've probably been on there about five or six times now. I've done Mystery Guest twice. Uh, the last time I was on there, I had an absolute Western super. You know what I mean? I got, I got my own question wrong. I got other questions wrong. Oh, I was just one to forget, but it's all, it's all good fun. Mystery, mystery Guest twice? Did you not guess the first time, no? <laughs> I missed for guess twice. First time was years ago. I went to the Leicester Riders and with all the basketball players, and they picked me up and doing slam dunks with like the John McEnroe headband on and all that. It was quite fun. And the second time was in Lutterworth, near where I lived. They got me driving this big tank. So that was that was a, a sort of strange experience, but it was all good fun. <laughs> Trying to stay out the limelight, mate. Just turn up to the club in a tank. Yeah, I don't think too many people guess me. You know, you've got all these big celebrities, and then they put me on there as mystery guests. <laughs> Well, obviously on other sports, do you play any other sports apart from snooker? Uh, I do play a few other sports, yeah, but very badly. I play a little bit of golf, I started getting into that throughout the summer, uh, but not too good, you know, I hit the ball probably once every 10 shots. Lose about 15 balls around, so it's not really enjoyable, but I do enjoy it. Uh, and played a little bit of football when I was younger at school, but snooker was the one for me, you know. I wish it was football with the money they get, but not to be, mate. Yeah, but there's no million pound if they score, score four goals, is there, or 20 goals in a season, no, mate. they just get it a month, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> They're on like 300 grand a week. They just get the million pound every month, guaranteed, whether they win or lose. Uh, uh, obviously, all the accolades to your name, mate. Obviously, I've obviously grown up juniors together, mm. me, and, me and yourself. It's so, I'm over the moon for you, proud of you, doing, doing the stuff you're doing. But obviously, with, your, with your, your traveling all over the world for the job, sometimes a couple of days before for the media, media stuff for promoters and sponsors and stuff, 
How do you find that? You know, obviously being family man yourself, you know, yeah. tough, tough travelling. It is tough, mate. Yeah, but I mean, it comes with the perks of the job, you know. I mean, obviously, once I get to the the other side of the country, wherever we are, if it's in China, I still enjoy the competitive side and and being there and playing the tournaments. As you say, the travelling side, especially now with having Sophia as well being away so much, but you're doing it for them, you know. So obviously, yeah. you have to sort of still think of that and, and use it as a as a motivation more than anything else. Mm. So before you go away then, what's your go-to meal before you go on a long trip? Say three weeks in China, you've got to be having a, a farewell dinner, mate. Yeah, I mean, roast, you know, roast is probably my favourite favorite meal, so I'll probably have a roast dinner, but don't always have that before I go away. But I mean, if, I had, if that was last resort, that's what it would be. It's funny, because sometimes when I get back from China, I get home and Vic says to me, what's, what do you want to eat? Like, I've been away for so long, and half the time we end up getting a Chinese. You know? <laughs> she said, you just come back from there. I said, yeah, but it's not the same. You can't get chicken's feet in the Chinese unless <laughs> OK, mate, well, thanks for joining us. Just a couple of questions before we finish. OK. Um, for the snooker boffins out there, what snooker cue, tip and chalk do you use? Snooker Q would be Stanford Q makers. I've had it for about 12 years now and uh, can't speak highly of them. You know, the great lads, Lewis and Paul, obviously a family run business and very, very good. Uh, tip would be a Sentry Q tip, G3, uh, which I've tried and been on them for a few years now. Really, really like it. And uh, short would be the Tawan, Tawan 2.0. And uh, since I've been using that, I can't remember the last time I've got a kick or, or a bad bounce unless you're using playing against another player who's using the, the triangle chalk. Do you put your tips on yourself? No, I can't put them on myself. I have a friend back home, a lad called Tom Sheard, who puts them on. I mean, I tried it once and glued my fingers together and never tried it again. <laughs> so I started trying to play with a closed yeah, fist. I mean, to, be fair, to be fair, I should try and do it. I mean, it can't be that odd, can it, putting a tip on? When you're away, if it comes off, at least you, you're there to do it yourself. Where if it comes off now, I'd have to rely on Clark or Paul Collar or someone like that. So luckily enough, it's not it's not come off when I've been at a tournament. And, um, Last but not least, mate, any advice to any aspiring players who want to follow in your footsteps? Well, not so much my footsteps, mate. I suppose, obviously, a lot of the other players. But, uh, no, just uh, if, if that's what you want to do, become a snooker player, obviously, like, commit to it, obviously, sacrifice. You need to make a lot of sacrifices. Put all the hours in under the sun and practice with players better than yourself to improve. Well, thanks very much for joining us, mate. Best of luck to the tournaments. Rest mate. of the season. <laughs>